you have a favorite Shakespeare play? No. Hey, welcome back to our stupid rack scene. It's I'm Corbin. I'm Hamlet. And you can follow us on Instagram, Instagram Twitter, or Juicy Com. Thanks so on Patreon. Juicy. Follow us on Patreon. Follow us on the squad. You can follow us on personal YouTube channels in the description below. And uh, with, uh, Hamlet's yours, right? Hamlet's Right, uh, that's why. Yep. I think we've talked about that before, obviously, in our, in our uh, header. header. Uh, and probably the McBull, and probably the Elm And everything. Yeah. And when I talk about, it's not only my favorite Shakespeare play, I think it's the mo most important and greatest work of theater of all ever. time, ever, yeah. So, anyways, obviously, we're uh, re reviewing the new film Georgie. Oh, uh, I thought we were supposed to watch like Macbeth with Sir Lawrence Olivier. Well, I think you can. You, you probably got the same gist. Probably we could. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna be okay. I think you'll be okay. Uh, because this is a total Macbeth adaption. <laughs> I actually would consider this more of a just inspired by than a yeah, full on we'll get adaption. We'll, we'll get into uh, But anyways, yes, Georgie, it came out uh, just the other day, uh, starring Fahat Fasil. We uh, were quick on this one, and if we hadn't been, I think Stupid Babies would have like took us out to the rails and tarred and feathered us or something. I think it would have been bad news. Directed bears. by. Ooh, that's not a very good reference, is it? No. Anymore. You can't make that reference anymore. No. It used to be a reference you could do as just like a general thing of we're going to take care of you, but that has very bad, bad, bad stuff. Bad, bad juju behind it. Directed by <laughs> Juju Joji. Hey, there you go. Save Delish Puffin. Who we've seen his other film, um, uh, this one. Oh my. Yeah, that one. Uh, yeah, the one where Fahad Vasil is the, 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 the necklace. Yeah, uh, the I just necklace can't pronounce one. it. And then it's, it's also true, starring because we'll butcher it. a whole bunch of other people. It's a, it's a, it's a heavy ensemble. Uh, but uh, Delish Puthan, say that one. Uh, Unamaya Prasad, Basil Joseph, uh, Baburaj. And so, forgive I, me if I'm mispronouncing it. I'm not words. sure. We might have seen that in supporting stuff, and like oh, this guy was apparently she was in Virus, and so we saw her probably in a supporting role there. Uh, but everyone else, it was mainly the Hot Basil uh, show. Uh, but yeah, so uh, this is. Hmm. I guess we'll we'll let you know when the spoilers coming. Yeah, if we say it, we'll try to we'll try to keep, try to keep the fun mostly end. non spoiler non spoiler. Um, but tough. yeah, uh, it's on Amazon. If you haven't watched it, go watch, go it. watch it. Come back, Rick. Your initial thoughts, please. Well, I didn't like that it ended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, zingo. Um, Hold on, what ending? I liked it. Um, you didn't like that it ended. Yeah, or no, that I just, it ended I just again. No, no, it no, no, ended no. twice. I know. What I was, I was just trying to be stupid and make you think that I didn't like it, and I'm terrible at those things because I can't. <laughs> Lying is antithetical to me. Um, I can usually tell if Rick liked a film before we start a review. Yeah, but we don't. <laughs> we don't talk about reviews ever uh, before we we sit down. This is just a raw. Oh, what did you think? What did you? Think? Yeah, we got our first impression right here. Uh, with you. But I can usually tell when you walk in. <laughs> I don't think he liked the film. Yeah, because <laughs> I I don't hide things very well. So uh, so you liked it? I thought it was really really good, man. I thought it was fantastically written. Yeah. I thought it was well directed. I thought it was really. Um, where if you're if somebody's wanting like we you said at the outset if somebody's wanting this like pure. Um, Shakespeare adaptation. Shakespeare adaptation. Watch McBool. Yeah, watch McBool. Then then you'll get that. That's not what this is, but it's it's, it's so good at yeah. what it does. Yeah, it's definitely a, and I I, I as well really enjoyed this film. Fahad Fasil, creme de la creme. Yeah, <laughs> I just I love the man. And so there's he's there's, just he's an actor, man. There's so much about this film that that I really enjoy. It's a slow slow burn. So if you if you're expecting what like a great ensemble, uh, like a big. Huge, massive reveal. If you're expecting stuff like that, you 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 might be disappointed. And but, and if you're a Shakespeare purist and you're wanting it to go into what Macbeth is known for, you're going to be irritated. Don't go in no. with that expectation on it. Go in looking it's, for this is a film that's a little bit inspired by. Yes, Macbeth. look for the subtleties. Yeah, look for things where. They give you something where rather than the totality of one motif or one message being in it, yeah. look for how it's thread throughout in small ways and how the general overall message is contempt. It's probably 
one of the best adaptations in terms of taking what Shakespeare wrote and then just refashioning that and keeping the heart of Macbeth intact, yeah. but making it its own yeah. entity. It's really smart. Yeah, as opposed to what Vishal did, which you know we love. We love. Uh, but that was a pure adaption. They took yeah. that story, put it in India, and kind of made it that. And made had it, all the characters. You didn't have a yeah. bunch of characters from Macbeth in this one. No. Outside of he was kind of no, playing and, Macbeth. And, and even, even relationally, some of the relationships weren't the same that you would expect in a, in a direct... But it's the word adaptation. Adaptation is loose. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even call it that. I, I would say it's inspired. inspired. I would it, say I would say it's just that. Inspired. Me too. I would not say this is an adaptation. I would say this was inspired by, by Macbeth. One hundred percent. Yeah, I, I did enjoy the film. We'll get into all of it. I enjoyed almost everything. Obviously, the acting by everyone. Everyone. Everybody. Was really, was really, really, really good. A great. One of the best ensemble things, and I am like I'm keeping track of our dummies that we're going to yeah, do at yeah, the end yeah, of the yeah. year. So I've been putting the things that when they stick in my head now, I'm saying, okay, I want that on the list. This for me is in multiple yeah. categories for what'll be best uh, of the year. The score was beautiful. Great. I love the score. I love the writing. Dummy contender. I love the writing in yep. terms of how dummy it contender. weaved itself. I was, oh, Vasile, I can rave about him. We'll get into that in the spoilers. So overall, I, I really, really enjoyed this film. You should definitely, definitely, definitely go watch this film. Uh, that's, well, I want to get into it more. So if you haven't watched it already, just please go watch oh, it. And that's the other thing that's great about this. Uh, I get so excited. This is probably one of the best films to give to somebody who's completely ignorant to everything Shakespeare ever wrote. Mm -hmm. And just give it to him and go, this was inspired by Macbeth. And they'd go, really? And probably get them intrigued enough to want to know more about Shakespeare. And if you know nothing about Shakespeare, don't care about Shakespeare, don't like Shakespeare, you're still going to like this as a standalone film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so overall, really, really enjoyed it. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's on Amazon. Because here come the spoilers. Uh, so we're going to get into spoilers here. We don't want you to be spoiled. Ready especially, especially if you don't know Macbeth. Naughty spoil time. Oh, yeah. That's a gift now. That's terrible. Uh, <laughs> uh, so especially if you don't know Macbeth. Yeah, uh, because if you know Macbeth, you can kind of you know where it's gonna go. Mm -hmm. It's you're expecting it. You're, yeah, so like that the entire it's like oh, Macbeth. This is what I'm expecting how it's supposed to end. Yeah, that's you kind of just have to if, if you say Macbeth, you know it's gonna be kind of it's gonna be a tragedy. Yeah, so anyways, <laughs> get watch it. Go watch it. Now we're gonna get into spoilers. So yes. Let's talk about acting. Okay, so spoiler time now. We're assuming you're watching this because you've seen Joji. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, okay. For you. Yeah. Let's go with the man first. Uh, boy. <laughs> he's, he, like I said at the beginning, the, he's the dude is just a solid actor. You want him? He's he's like um, he's on, he loved him so much. Yeah, he's just pretty much anything like Raj Kumar Rao. I consider them really comparable in terms of give them a role, and they're gonna do it. And you could pretty much put them in any kind of a role. And he's a shapeshifter too, because this I don't know if he dropped weight for this. He sure looks like it. <laughs> he looked so young. I bet he and did. So thin. I bet he did because part of the thing in the script was the differentiation between him and the dad. Yeah, big, yeah. yeah, yeah and that the dad one. referred to him at that one point as like this little blanket, and he's supposed to, you know, he's the yeah. mountain of a man. I bet he did it's, lighten up. But it's strange, because I could have pegged him in this as mid-20s, right? Yeah. Other films we've seen, he could be 40s. He, he, <laughs> he can really play anything you want him to play. It's, it's I mean insane that. how well he yeah. did at, at one... Getting that whole uh, seek of a younger person, mm -hmm. getting the whole mentality, mentality. of a person. Body person. language. But then also, energy in the skeletal muscular framework. The way he crafted his Macbeth character was so unique because Macbeth, this Macbeth is such a, he's a, he's a sleazeball. He's, he's, he's not, he's not a good person. Yeah. He's always crafting how he's going to get ahead. Like the he's entire weaselly. time. Yeah. Yeah. He's very weaselly. Which I thought, because we're going to go back and forth with this with every aspect of the film. So focusing on this main character. I thought was really great because one of the things that's open to the way Shakespeare wrote Macbeth is what motivates Macbeth. Now, obviously, the primary message of Macbeth, regardless of how Macbeth is played, is going to be the consuming parasitic awfulness of uh, selfish aspiration and greed and wanting to aspire to something and obtain it, right? Mm -hmm. That's the core message of Macbeth. But the cool thing about Shakespeare, like all of his things that he writes, is that the characters aren't simple. They're pretty complex. Mm -hmm. And it's open to interpretation, like all people. And I loved, both in the writing and his interpretation, that this wasn't so much about a guy who really was a conniving, 
usurping, evil-intended guy whose mind gets switched with, in the original Macbeth, you've got these prophecies were said about me. So you've got the self-importance thing. You, mm -hmm. get, you can take it, you could take it to the grand extreme of making it kind of almost Trumpian in terms of mm -hmm. this self-aggrandizing, I'm gonna get everything. The wife is in his ear saying, do it, do it. There's these, oh, God must want me in power. Mm -hmm. None of that for Joji. No. Joji was just, it wasn't even a Lady Macbeth, no, really. There wasn't even a Lady Macbeth. It was Joji. She was, was a just massive part of Macbeth. Huge. <laughs> and I loved it. It was more, it was so subtle with just, I've got this opportunity. Yeah. Which I think is really powerful because what it does is it makes Macbeth more applicable to the common man in terms of yeah. anyone is susceptible, if we're not paying attention to, well, if he goes, I could be wealthy, he's going to die anyway. All of those small rationalizations. Yeah. And it was almost a performance within a performance. Because obviously, obviously he was giving his performance to Joji, but he was also putting on performance for the family. For everyone else. Correct. All the time. Yeah. And he was, did so well at, at flipping that switch sure for, for the audience to, to see. There was so many, like the, the one where the brother confronted him about where he was and where he was smoking. And that whole... Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then I love, I actually, even though I don't normally like these endings, I loved the ending where he came back. And he I wasn't dead. Talk to me. He wasn't dead. Okay, I got a lot to say about that. <laughs> Not just for the fun factor. Yeah. Because it's purely just great artistic fun. It's great artistic fun, but then the fact that he said, just blink. Yeah. And even at that moment, he will not uh, admit to his guilt. Uh, and then in his suicide note, he was, uh, and I know we're getting off of a hot pursuit a little bit. In terms Which is of fine. Performance. We got a good old um, But the. He wrote a suicide note, and it was all society has done this to me. It was all these lies and bullshit. <laughs> Pure deflection. Even at the very end, yeah, yeah, yeah. where he shoots himself with an airsoft. <laughs> I love his scream too. Yeah. Pop. Ah! <laughs> I loved it. I did too. Now here's something I loved. I loved two things that were so subtle. Mm -hmm but they show the depth of the understanding of both our director and our writer about Macbeth. Yeah. I loved two, two things. First of all, in this aspect, rather than have Macbeth go mad, which is what happens in Shakespeare's yeah. Macbeth, he goes, and I love Macbeth. I mean, Macbeth, when it's done right, is a descent into evil, madness. darkness, yeah. occultic madness. Yeah. It is just bleak. So what I loved is that rather than it end with Macbeth in madness, it ended with him in that state he was in, mm -hmm. where it basically is still a physical representation of the totality of his being altered, but not madness. Yep. I thought that was so intelligent. And I also, I don't know if they intended it, but when he picks up the air gun toward the end when he's about to kill himself with it, I thought, okay, you've been using this air gun a lot. And it just clicked with me and I went, ah. So rather than give us what Shakespeare did, which was this constant focus on uh, this, the, the greedy aspiration to become, it was embodied, the covetousness of want was embodied in the little air gun from the beginning. Mm -hmm. When the kid wanted the air gun and he did something to get the air gun. That air gun was in a constant position throughout of being the thing that was either wanted or could get or get you what you want. Yeah. So rather than like Shakespeare, this giant thing of blood and murder and prophetic witches saying what you're gonna get, it was just the air gun throughout representing the same thing. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, I wanna talk about the directing. Uh, Cause this director whom we love that other film that with Fahat Fasil, uh, I want to see that, the one that we didn't get to see, but, because um, this guy directed the, the, the one with the necklace. Right, the one with the necklace that and we always, we only don't pronounce it because we don't want to just it's, butcher it. It's called that. Uh, again, uh, Tondi Muthalam Drik Saksyam. So same director, obviously, for obviously, love that film. This love, one's easier to pronounce for us because yeah. we're so dumb. Love Joji, and it's also a pretty unique because I don't know if, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was intended, these are hooks, so I don't, I don't. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, the I hooks and the J. Yeah, the hooks and the J for, for the for the hooks in the film, and you finally figured out what was on the end of it. Yeah, of the <laughs> we finally the did. But the other one is called Maha. Yeah, I can't even pronounce Maha Shanta Pratakaram. With also with uh, Fahad Fasil, so I'm very interested in that now. But yeah, I thought he did a fantastic job. Him, the cinematographer. Oh, great! The job. Cinematographer was so great job. Oh, beautiful in this film. It was almost equal to like Kumbalaji Nights of just. Falling, I think it was Kerala that they were still in, uh, but it was absolutely gorgeous. 
uh, the way they, they painted the picture it, of this landscape. And it felt like a play sometimes, didn't it? Mm -hmm. That whole ensemble feeling, which is what Macbeth is. Mm -hmm. Macbeth is an ensemble, like all of Shakespeare's things. Yeah. Um, and I wondered as well if there was just another little wink to the three witches when they had just the three guys in the pit. And, oh, might have been. Right? Yeah, there's, might have Maybe been. there was a reason there were three guys in the pit, and that's where the dad yeah. succumbs, because in Macbeth... The reason the dad falls is because of the prophecy of the witch. Yeah, I bet that was a. Yeah, I bet that was a. Uh, a little just little tip things of the cap. like that. Yeah, exactly. Rather than just be a direct, you know, like text for text or idea for idea, there were all of these things that said, "We know Macbeth inside and out, and we're gonna just make this story inspired by it." Yeah, and I think there was um, a bunch of uh, other stuff, which was one really cool that this took part in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. First film I've seen that it's not about the pandemic, no, but, but it takes place in it, our current world. Right. Everybody's wearing a mask. Every, it's like, so I just hadn't seen that yet. And I was like, this is kind of cool. Like, it is. It's, it's had, our world. They're not making a big deal about it. It's just 20 years from now, you'll watch this and hopefully we will no longer be wearing masks. <laughs> and it'll be one of those things that you, could be, years you could be watching this film in, let's say, in even 10 years, right? Yeah. And you're watching it with Leland mm -hmm. and go... This is back when you were born. Everybody was having to wear the mask. Yep. That's contextually where this takes place at that time. I really enjoyed it. And then there was a bunch of lines that were really and more tip of the cap. Like, I think one of the best lines was um, when she, who she did a phenomenal job, the girl. Um, who was Lady Macbeth, as it were? Bincy. Yeah, Bincy. Her name is. She's, she's basically the Lady Macbeth character, though she's not Macbeth's wife. Right there? Yeah. Uh, Onamaya Prasad. Yes. Uh, apparently we saw her in, in Virus. Um, I thought she did a really good job. Very subtle performance. Yes, very, very strong performance. Um, Great Indian Kitchen performance. I, I felt like agreed. she was in that role in the family. Agreed. Uh, but she also wanted to uh, help the family out as opposed to that one because the, the family was an absolute asshole in that family. Uh, but I felt she was in that kind of role, mm -hmm. which is why she didn't speak up a lot. She yeah. Didn't, she didn't do a lot, but she was the no, one that she, had to serve everyone. Yeah, she to. was the backbone of the family, it felt mm -hmm. like. While the dad was the muscle, I really felt like, especially for him, and that was where, while she's not the same character as Lady Macbeth in terms of the putting the ideas in his head, yeah. she was still the same character in terms of the dependence that Macbeth, Joji, had on this woman yes. in his life. Yeah. And I felt that that was a really nice yeah. fit. A uh, great line in it was when she came in at the funeral and told him to get up and put your mask on. Mm. It was very, because it's a kind of a typical cap, but again, to make Beth. Exactly. It's obviously yeah. double entendre, pandemic, but also. It works. Yeah, I, th I love putting on the mask. Uh, and there was a bunch of those kind of lines that wouldn't surprise me if they just kind of adapted it from well, the original. And text. again, the rubber woods. Mm -hmm. That is something that the witches prophesy in the original Macbeth. They prophesy that Hamlet's demise is going to come from a forest. And he can't wrap his head around that as to what that actually means. And what happens is the guys who come to get him for doing what he did come camouflaged in bushes and trees from out of the forest. Is it any wonder that in this story, he goes into the forest mm -hmm. and it's from there that it's found out that he's done what he's done and the forest is the place of his demise. Again, yeah. another, we know Macbeth, but you don't have to know Macbeth to enjoy the film. No, absolutely not. And there was just a bunch of stuff like that. It, but I want to talk about the score as well. That yeah, was, that was one of fantastic. the fantastic. First things you notice in the film is it's a very orchestral yeah. uh, score, but perfect for Macbeth. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Perfect. It was haunting. Mm -hmm. uh, what a composer, his name is. Um... Yeah, every moment of it was pretty flawless, and and it had points. It was a great score by Justin uh, Varghese. If I'm for, if I'm mispronouncing that, forgive me. But it had what you want in a score. It had moments where you didn't even know it was there, mm -hmm. and then it had moments where, as somebody who pays attention to the details, you could step back and go, Oh, come on. Yeah. That's just freaking great. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I loved, loved the score. It was, it was very little. The only, I think the only way you wouldn't enjoy this film is if you don't like slow burns. If you, yeah. If, if, you're, if you're the kind of person that just needs action, needs, needs stuff to be going on that's in your face, there's always stuff going on in this film. But, no, I, I know people. I mean, I've, I know someone uh -huh. who they don't like movies that make you think. They want brainless activity. So they're going to watch... I mean, like, that's okay sometimes. But I like, know, but it's their normal like diet. They don't want to watch stuff that's stimulating intellectually. It's, uh, it's very confounding. To very me. strange. Yeah, but I agree with you. I personally don't... 
I don't think that this is a movie that uh, you would like if that's the kind of person you are. Other than that, especially if you're a film lover and if you're a Shakespeare lover, this is for me, again, India has taken a Shakespearean play and made a great contemporary adaptation of it. It's for me, one of the best adaptations of Shakespeare put on film. Of the films that have come out this year, what, what's your favorite so far? Uh, that have come out this year, released, not that we've watched. No, 2021. This one. This is my favorite film this year. I will put Grady and Jane Kitchen over this, I, but this I, is number two. I, that's, I can't argue with that, yeah. that's one of those, like if we were voting at the end of the year and you said Great Indian Kitchen, yeah. I couldn't blame you for it. But for me, yeah. 50 years from now, I'll be recommending Joji I'll because be, of the Shakespeare connection. I'll be recommending both of them. Uh, I loved them. I loved them both. I just, I think the, the overall film uh, and, and the message I thought was so powerful. Oh, it is. Uh, and this was too, and I was taking anything away from this. No, and I'm not <laughs> taking anything away. I loved Great Indian Kitchen, but if I had, you know, if someone put an air gun to my head, mm -hmm. <laughs> see it. Well, I I would I'd pick Joji. Yeah, it's my favorite it. so far. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I think uh, Fahad Fassi, I love his choices uh, <laughs> in in just picking quirky, dark. He brings such a quirkiness to all of his characters. Just certain moments in this when he would just stare, and it would make me laugh. Yeah, just the way he's staring or smiling. And yeah, it, no, that, I I loved, and I don't oh, I don't know if it was scripted or if it was just an organic thing that happened in the moment, or maybe it happened when they rehearsed the scene and the director said, keep it. But toward the end, when he's, just before he confesses, he's called out for doing it and he knows they're onto him. And his reaction is, <laughs> and walks into his room. I thought, that was freaking weird. Yeah, I That was it. great. I loved it. Yeah. And if, if, if a lesser actor was acting in it, it would seem, Forced. Forced. It wouldn't be real. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would have been, you did that, you did that so we would notice. It wasn't. He's such, that's a, why I, he's such a talented actor. He makes everything look natural and yeah. effortless. That's why I'd love to know the, the origin of that. Because I, my guess is it just happened and they kept the take. Yeah. So. So let us know what you thought of it. Uh, yeah. we, we hated it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Garbage film? Garbage? Yeah. yeah really, you know, really garbage. I can't remember the last time a release came out. And more stupid babies were assaulting my direct message inbox. Trish him too. Yeah, I guess that was the last one. Trish him too. Yeah, but this was. Hopefully, they'll be a little more happy with us. When are you us. doing it? When are you doing it? When are you doing it? You gotta watch Joji. You gotta watch Joji. So I'm very much looking forward to his next one that comes out. I think it comes out in May. The, yeah. The one where he has a beard. Yeah. Uh, very much looking forward to that. Let Let us know what the next uh, Malayalam and Fahad Fasil film that's already been out. Uh, and we should probably start another channel, like a third channel, for just Fafa 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 stuff. Yeah, probably. Uh, our stupid Fafa reaction. Our stupid Fafa reaction. Maybe he'd come talk to us. Also, over there. he needs a song. Yeah, yeah he we does. We need to get him a song or a chant. Fafa, 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 Fafa.